Well, this kicks it off. This is the start. It's not January 1st, but uh, this is one of my New Year's resolutions, which is to begin my first podcast. It could be a little rough, but that's how I'm going to live on the edge. This is CB, Coach Bass, and I'm coming to you from partially sunny but warm Weston, Florida, along with uh, my partner for today. My guest for today is... The one and only, Caitlin Bass. Caitlin Bass, that's right. I'm starting this off with my daughter, Caitlin, and uh, we've got a lot of important topics to talk about throughout the day, and I'm glad you're here to join me. I'm just as glad as you are. So, a little bit about the format of the way this is going to work. So, first of all, for those of you that are listening out there, and I hope there will be many throngs. Can I say throngs? You can say it. Throngs of people listening. Um... The format's going to be interesting because we are going to, well, actually not we, because you're going to be at school, so it'll be me. I can come back. Periodically. But you're not the guest all the time. I'll have different guests. All right, that's fair. I don't want to break your heart. (laughs) It's only a little bit broken. Okay, then we'll get through this. Um, But I'm going to record the podcast in a variety of areas, so it'll be kind of fun and exciting. Of course, uh, many of you know me, know I am an assistant principal, uh, coach. Uh, at Lambert High School in Suwannee, Georgia. So numerous uh, areas that I'll be recording at latter dates, latter dates, will be in that vicinity. And today we're poolside, so if you hear a little breeze in the trees, that's because we're outside in Miami, Florida, or I guess Western Florida. Western Florida, but close enough, close enough. And uh, today's an exciting day uh, for some. For the, those like yourself who are not football fans, it's not too exciting, but... For those who are, today is the famous, uh, the big day of the playoffs in college football. We've got today at four is uh, the Fighting Irish versus Clemson. Caitlin, how do you feel about that game? <laughs> Repeat who it is. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I can't say that I feel one way or another. Maybe I guess uh, I feel more towards Clemson because they're in the South. We, we toured there once. You did tour when you were considering going there. Now you are you were a student at Georgia College State, GCSU, um, whose mascot is? The Bobcats. The Bobcats. You are a Bobcat. However, this is exciting because as of this week, you are going to be? A bulldog in five days, actually. Five, five days. Go dogs. Go dogs. And we're making that change because? Because I am switching to pursue my career in the fashion industry, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I love doing theater, but um, it's just something I have a passion for. I kind of... And figuring out what I want my career to be in. And, you know, I, I'm always thinking about fashion, always trying to pursue that art form. So, And if anyone's ever seen your, uh, your work and what you do with all kinds of clothes, they would understand. Of course, yes, that is a father's perspective, but <laughs> go take a look, those of you out there. And I think you will agree with me that she is making the right decision, although I know you're going to miss GCSU. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to miss it. I wouldn't, we were talking about this last night, as I, I'm happy to be going to UGA, but um, I wouldn't, you know, as with any like step in your life, I would never trade the memories that I had there and people I met there, and also the, a lot of performance opportunities that I got there. That too. is true. That is true. And um, you know th- what I love about GCSU, which kind of cracks me up. And, and by the way, let, let, we, this is why the show is called Around the Horn with CB because, uh, and I'll get back to GCSU in, ex- in a second. But let me explain the, the title of the show. For those of you who know me, those of you who may not know me, you're going to know that for I still am, but I was a head baseball coach for 18 years, and I still coach a lot of baseball. And in baseball, when an out is made, it's thrown, the ball is thrown around the horn, okay, you know, between the third baseman, second baseman, short stop, first baseman, back to the pitcher. Well, as it applies to this show, it's going to be around the horn because we're going to jump around the horn, all different kind of topics from one thing to the next. I may leave in the middle of a topic. You may get frustrated with me because I may leave something I'm in the middle of talking about and jump into something else like my explanation of around the horn. But back to GCSU. So what I find interesting about GCSU is a lot of people, male, female, athlete, non-athlete, it doesn't matter, when they do not get into or have not got into the big schools, namely UGA, and they go to a GCSU, I love the, the famous line that, well, I'm just going there and I'm definitely, I'm going to transfer because, you know, I'm just, it's just, it's just a stepping stone. But I find it interesting because GCSU, m- the majority of the people, many of which I've either coached or known, um, end up staying as you probably would have had not, had they had the major you're interested right. in. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess in my life, it kind of was a stepping stone. That's kind of what it turned out to be, but that was never my intention. And most people that go there, that's never their intention. It's usually for you know, an outside factor, not because they dislike the school. I mean, it's, it's a great place. It's a small town. Um, I love going there. Give me some so. Buffingtons. 
yeah, Buffington's was great. I, it's great hang. I mean, that was the hangout, and also. Um, the drag shows came out of there, so that was really cool to be a part of that. So. And the um, uh, the coffee shop is Blackbird, Blackbird the where Blackbird they have Blackbird Theater. Blackbird Theater, and they also have some great um, uh, some great comedy in there. Some improv mm-hmm. is great in there. Yeah, there's a lot of great theater opportunities there, which is something I'm definitely going to miss for sure. And the cool thing about that, even though you know you're you're leaving there and then you're you're pursuing this endeavor, is like anybody else out there, you know, you may change your mind. You're at a point in your life where you know you're fortunate where. You're just kind of testing the waters, dipping a toe, as they say. Yes, that you could you could assume that. So but. that's good. So that's good, and you're um you know, you're you're finding your way, as they say. Mm-hmm. So, uh, moving on. So the couple things I want to talk about today in the first, uh, the initial podcast of Around the Horn with CB, is uh, something that's applicable and it's going to be applicable. Every show I have, every guest I have, everything I discuss. The essence of me is the Tom Bass, I'm just call it the rating system. Usually it's the movie rating system, but I'm going to call it the rating system because I'm going to apply it to everything. And when I have guests like yourself, today I may throw something out to you and ask you to rate it based on that. Okay. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to kind of explain that for those out there that do not know the rating system. Right. Okay, so basically, for those of you that don't know, um, I am a big, big film buff. I love movies. And do you love movies? I love movies. That's how I was raised. You were raised loving movies and appreciating movies. And what is the one thing that you know when you go to a movie is what? Well, there's several things. Several things. Share with us. Well, here's how it works in our family. First thing, you can't miss the previews. If you miss the previews, you probably shouldn't go. Right. Okay. Because you're weak. You are weak. Okay. So you can't miss the previews. You don't talk. We went to, we actually went to a movie yesterday in Miami, Florida at, at a mall. And the whole, we went to go see Ben is Back. Which we'll discuss in a moment. Right, but the whole movie people were talking. It was like sacrilege. It was painful. Yeah, it was painful. It was painful. There was, there was uh, popcorn bags. Uh, there, was, there was people. There was, there was a cell phone. Someone had the flashlight on because they had a lost ticket. Yeah. It was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. But um, that's, that's usually rule number two. And then, of course, we, I have to have raisinets. Right. Uh, that is my food of choice. What is your food of choice? I usually just go steady popcorn. I'll do a Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces. <laughs> You're into rhyming today. Yeah, I guess so. I just read it. I just finished a book. So what did you What did you finish? Tell us about the book you read. One Q84 by Mur- Mur- Haraki, Haruki Murakami. Well stated. That's <laughs> Thank uh, you. easy for you to say, English major. Yeah. So uh, was it a good book? Um, it, it was. It would have been better if it was about 600 pages shorter. <laughs> it was a tad lengthy. It was a little, little, lengthy. little verbose, as they yes, say. Yes, yeah. Um, okay, so so the movie rating system, I call it the movie rating system, but um, is, and here's the deal, is it's a zero to five scale. Right. So there's no half. So uh, people that go with a half, I believe, are are weak. They're, they sell out. They, they can't commit. Could you agree with that? I can agree with that. And as someone who's bad at making decisions, the scale kind of forces me to go one way or the other. I so. like it. So for those of you listening out there um, and viewing, just kidding, you're not viewing because if you're viewing, you're looking at just a screen with probably like an icon on it right yeah, now, yeah. which you're going to create for me. Yes. Is it going to look good? Hopefully. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, and for, by the way, before I forget, for any of you that ever want to re- react or respond to the show or have questions, you can email me well, at... Uh, we'll put the email in the description of the video or of the the podcast so that people can can you do that does technology allow for that it allows wow i'm not that savvy but we can do that yes so i don't need to say what my email is i don't need to say tom m bass 11 at gmail.com well now you have so so there we go um (laughs) okay so let's talk about the movie rating system so the movie rating system first of all zero to five five is one of your all-time favorite films any genre and you gotta understand um it's like a horse race i bet on the three horse you bet on the six horse. We have different predictions. We have different likes. So you can't get angry with people. You can have discussions about it. Right. What would a five for you be? Um, I mean, I always go classic Little Miss Sunshine. I love Little Miss Sunshine. Great film. Um, Clockwork Orange is one of my favorite movies. Little Stanley I love Kubrick, it. great yeah. film, classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I watch. I actually watched. Uh, well. I know we're talking about it in this podcast later, but this year I saw American Animals. That's a five for me. For and you sure. know what? I'm going to agree with that. In great. fact, that's the only five I would give this year. I would I would agree with you on that. I liked some other movies, but it was just kind of a disappointing year for movies. It is. And let's talk about that for a second um, because 
I'm going to be bold enough to say that in all my years of, of film going, which are many, I would say this is probably the most mediocre year in the history of film. I, I really have been highly disappointed with movies this year. That's, and here's my biggest problem with it. I feel like, A, it's a lack of creativity. I feel like it's been very rare this year that I've seen a movie that wasn't based on something. That's very true. And even American Animals, which I loved, was still based on something. It was, you know? true story. So I, I, I like those movies. You know, you can make something really great out of, you know, some of my favorite books or films, like Clockwork Orange was based on a book, you know, but I, I guess I'm kind of missing that sense of originality in the theaters. And it's not necessarily that this year was bad, like full of ones or twos, which we'll explain in a minute. Correct. But it was it was mediocre like you're saying it was just like okay everything was okay it really was it was, it was um okay and you're gonna you're gonna see that um i i could be a pretty harsh critic so those you which i love there's gonna be disagreements because i'm always every show you're gonna get a movie review because again you have to understand me i would rather now i don't watch movies at home rarely do i watch right. films at home but i would rather go to a movie then just do just about anything. Right now we're sitting poolside in beautiful Western Florida. It's <laughs> sunny out. And if you ask me what I would rather do, I'd be f far more excited to be sitting in a dark theater watching a film right now. So enough said there. So the Bass uh, Movie Rating System, and by the way, those of you out there, if you want, steal it. It can now become the... Uh, you know, the Horowitz movie rating system, if your last name were Horowitz. Justin Timberlake you, uh, was told about the best movie rating system, actually. He was, and tell me, how did that come about? Um, so our cousin, or my cousin Nikki, your nephew, Nick Rosen, um, was playing the keys for a band called the Shadow Boxers this summer who opened up for Justin Timberlake, um, which was an amazing experience. Toured with them? Yeah, toured with them. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, um, all awesome. over the country. So that was really amazing, and they'd be sitting on the tour bus and, you know, and whatnot, and um, the Shadow Boxers, when my dad told them, because we went backstage, obviously, uh, told them about the Bass Movie rating system, and they were so hyped about it, they have been telling everybody, including the Sir Justin Timberlake. That is very funny and very true. So, yeah. And what's great is uh, they, as they were on the bus, Nikki said that they all they would do is just go through hundreds of movies and rate them. So you now, for those that are listening out there, and I hope there are many throngs, throngs of like people. Like you said, yeah. Throngs. Um, uh, and by the way, all I ask is that you share this and ask for one new person to listen every time I have a podcast, and then the, uh, the, the CB Army will grow. Is that what you're calling? I, I don't know. I, I may go there. I may go. That's a throwback to the Kiss Army. Kiss. I used oh, to love Kiss as a kid, right, and they yeah. were the Kiss Army. That okay. was their big thing. Which they're touring, by the way, this year. And I was going to go see them. And my, my um, friend of mine by the name of Andy, uh, Andy is one, probably uh, my, my closest and dearest friend, um, certainly closest and dearest college friend. Um, we, he is my movie, uh, and not, excuse me, not my concert buddy. We see everything together. And we were going to go see Kiss. They're coming uh, in the spring until he played me a cut of Paul Stanley's voice. No offense to Paul. I'm sure he's listening to the show right yeah, now, without a doubt. It's already number gotten, one. Number one. It's already gotten back to Kiss. But after hearing him sing uh, some of the old vintage Kiss songs, probably not worth, worth the two to $300. Really? Uh, to, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. So That's we are not going to go see Kiss. So a five on the bass scale is one of your all-time favorite films, which we've discussed. Mm -hmm. Four great film one of the best of the year yeah i mean it's a great film uh and there haven't been a lot of fours this year no it's either a three or a five this year it, it, or a three or below oh really. yeah, yeah i mean yeah. um fours i mean i'm i'm it, it, it takes an effort i loved i know you haven't seen it i thought a uh, beautiful boy was great which i i've had at least three people this week when i told them i was seeing ben is back they were like have you seen beautiful boy i'm like i need to find some place i think it's on amazon so i might try and watch it soon because I've, I've heard amazing things about it it is so. uh, it, it, well it's great it's incredibly acted it's a great film it's a four it's one of the best of the year um but not a lot of those this year no. um then the, the more common would be the three most movies are a three we hope I mean, at least a three is at least it's a movie that's worth seeing on the big screen i mean you went you you, you know you used your either your premiere card from uh you know from your amc that's the stubs card mm -hmm. or you shelled out the 12 bucks 12 bucks which is a lot of money, but yes. you sell it twelve bucks. You got your raisinets, you got the diet coke, you got your popcorn, mm -hmm. and you sat through a movie and it was over. You're like, it was good. I'm glad I sat and went to see it. Yeah. And that's what many films are to me. Yesterday, I would say Ben is back. 
falls into that category. I did not leave there saying, "Why did I come to this movie?" I thought it was, I thought it was worth right, seeing. Right. Yeah, and that's and honestly, I shelled out the the most threes this year because, like you said, it wasn't. I mean, yes, it was a bad year for movies, but everything was mediocre. It wasn't like so bad. You know, it was just there. It was there. Yeah. Then you have the two. Mm-hmm. The two is the film that is just. It's it's still you know it's not a horrible film. But it's you can't pay for it on the big screen. You do the red box, you do uh, on demand, you know, whatever. If you've got, I guess, the Amazon Prime. Do you watch movies on Amazon yeah. Prime? Yeah, you can watch movies. Or Netflix. Netflix. Netflix now is releasing all kinds of movies. Mm-hmm. Bird Box just came out. Bird Box, heard... um, the new Coen Brothers film released on Netflix. I watched it. What What was it called? Um, Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And oh, I, yeah. I would I would give it a, th- a three. I've heard. I, actually, we were in the car. We were looking at top twenty fives of the year and stuff, mm-hmm. and that was actually on a lot of the list. It's a good so, film. Yeah. I mean, I, w- I definitely would recommend watching. So that's a two. I think most fall into that category, as do most most things that you rate on the bass system are probably twos and threes unfortunately because that means we live in a mediocre world which there's a lot of mediocrity correct yeah, correct then we get to the one the one is the one where you, it's painful you look at yourself in the mirror and scream why why did i see this film and i think there's actually one that we both agree on that there's been a lot of disagreement well, you're, are you going to say it are we this is going to really ruffle some feathers or Russell Feathers, either one. Well, a couple, or what was it, two years ago? We saw the movie The Witch, and that was probably one of the most painful movies that we both agreed that we've ever seen. Recommended by someone who we love near and dear to our heart, Woody. I don't know if, do we give last, we probably shouldn't give last yeah, names. Yeah, probably no last So we'll say with Woody. He is an educator, English teacher extraordinaire, and we love him, and he is a movie buff, <laughs> but sometimes he gives us the worst films, and The Witch, was one of them. Well, and, and I have other people in my life who have said the same thing. They, they think it's great. I mean, I guess everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but that was an example of a one that we'd see. That's right, and it's so. back to my horse race. Some people bet on that horse. We would not bet on that horse. I agree with that. This year, this is really going to bother some people, we saw a film, and this, let me just say this before I tell you what the film is. We saw a film that I love, I really enjoy the series, if you will, but this was a really bad film. Get ready. They're going to not like us, Caitlin. Yeah. Do you dare? I dare. Dare it. Solo. We saw Solo this year, and um, it rough. was it was a rough. horrible film. Yeah, it was, I'd say it was, you know what? I would say it's worse than The Witch. I think so, too. It was, it was I was writhing in pain in my seat, wanting the film to end. I, I, I don't know if it was because we had a long day before or whatever, because I remember we were doing a bunch of stuff that day, but it was... It was excruciating in was every bad. in every sense. It yeah. was bad. It was bad. And then um then here's the twist though on the scale, and this can apply again to regular life is the zero, and in film it's so bad that it's actually funny. A zero oftentimes is a horror film, and usually bad comedies are zeros. Yeah. And uh, I mean they can be, to me if you had to rate it, where does it fall? Certainly above a one. I mean it's 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 a movie that I don't know if I'd pay to see it, so it's probably in the twoish area. But it's just so bad that it's actually funny. Mm-hmm. Those, those come about from, from time to time. Maybe like once a year. Once a year. But this year is the year of mediocrity in, in film. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's a nothing, nothing but threes. So I think, uh, Caitlin, um, I think our time is, uh, where are we time-wise right now? About 18 minutes. Shall we talk a little bit more? If you want to. Okay. It's your podcast. Little... You're the king of this castle. Are you out there? Are you still listening out there? Sounds like yeah, they, they are. are. <laughs> Excellent. So, by the way, on the podcast, normally, and I hopefully I get Caitlin, I am not the tech guy. I want my intro music. I don't know if I'm going to change it, but I need, everybody's got a karaoke song. So, you know, when you go down to maybe Panama City, you go to the, the bar, they're doing karaoke, and you grab that mic, you've got that song. Well, mine is a TNT by ACDC. I, I, I kill it. Uh, I don't actually have the ability of Angus Young to play the guitar. And by the way, and talking about concerts, let's talk about concerts a little bit more. Um, everyone that I like is dying. So I guess that ages me because when we go to concerts now, it's basically tribute bands, okay? I mean, there's one decrepit 70-year-old on a keyboard that they hoist up, and then everybody else is in their 30s playing his music. Which Highly is, depressing. It's very sad. Um, but I say this because ACDC is collapsing. However... I did go with Andy, my my uh, concert buddy, as I mentioned earlier. We saw ACDC a couple years ago, and um, 
It was pretty awesome. Uh, it, Axl Rose was lead singing right. because uh, Brian Johnson went deaf. Yes, so right, before, right before your date, the, the, actually. The night before my date, I got word uh, that, that Brian Johnson's deaf. So we, uh, <laughs> we got postponed, and we saw ACDC with Axl Rose, and it was awesome. And Angus killed it. It was, it was great, but everybody's dying. Um, uh, sadly, and this is for real, a couple years ago, I went with Andy and his wife. We went to see, and thank goodness I wasn't going to go, and I ended up going to the last minute. We ended up seeing Tom Petty, and oh, yeah. that show, it was crazy. I think it, they said something like that whole band was still together, the whole band intact for like 25 years. And I've seen, I saw Petty a number of times, and he sounded like he did 30 years ago. And sadly, you know, I saw right that show, after. and he died not not long after that. And so that was really, uh, it was sad, but it was an amazing show. But um, so everybody's dying. Everybody's dying. So that's why I come to you also, and I'll be coming to you periodically to have you review, although we have a different taste in music, but uh, who are a couple of, of groups, singers that you like right now that for some of the younger folk, or maybe even not, just those that like music, who might they want to entertain um, and listen to some music that's out there nowadays? Well, I guess, like you said, it does depend on what your taste is. Um, Personally, I think this has been a pretty good year for music. Um, there's been some great releases. I'm I'm pretty big into I guess you maybe put it in like as f folk pop or you know something that's inspired by folk. Um, so I've really been into. There's a new um, collective called Boy Genius. It's formed of Lucy Dacus, Phoebe Bridgers, and Julian Baker, and they put out an EP this year that was really beautiful. Mm. And then all three singers on their own I've been a fan of, and they all released music this year as well. So they've been what I've been listening to. We've, we've talked a little bit about Greta Van Fleet. Can I discuss them? I may, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, that, you know, for a rock and roll person like I am, I, I enjoy rock and roll. I mean, I really do. If you've not heard Greta Van Fleet, they are certainly an up and comer. They're a touch of Zeppelin, I think a little touch of Rush. They got a little Rush sound, a little, mm -hmm. um, a little Getty Lee uh, voice in there as well. And uh, they can jam it. And they're coming to Atlanta in the spring. And Caitlin, I don't know if I, Andy and I will invite you, but I think uh, we're going to... I steal bands from you, yes. if I may say so. I, I'm stealing Greta Van Fee, the ultimate band that I stole from Caitlin. She's giving me some great ones, like Fall Out Boy, which I really enjoy. But the ultimate band that I have stolen from her that now I will not miss, I mean... One of my top, probably three or four bands of all time, Panic at the Disco. I love that. You and you come to life at a Panic at the Disco show. We rocked is, it. We oh, went yeah. last year. Oh yeah, it was great. Panic at the Disco. Um, I'm a big Paramore fan. I feel like you would like them if you listen to them a little bit more. I enjoy them. We saw them open one time. They were great. Fall Out Boy. Yeah, Fall Out yeah. Boy. Yeah, it was a great um, concert. So yeah, they, I mean they were great. They they're always great. I was kind of let down a little bit with their newest album, so I'm hoping they'll kind of swing back and make something like. Because, you know, you release Death of a Bachelor, and then it's kind of hard to top that. So I hope that they come out with something a little better. And but. speaking of uh, being around the horn, let's jump right into something you just said, which I'm jumping into a completely another topic because you just mentioned it, which is The Bachelor. <laughs> now, for those of you that are out there uh, that don't know me, I have no problem being a head high school coach for years and coaching baseball and, you know, a sports guy and, 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 and such. But my guilty pleasure, and I'm very proud to uh, proud to admit it, is uh, I am part of the Bachelor Nation. Oh, obviously. I love the Bachelor. It would be my five of five shows. I, I watch Bachelor in Paradise. I watch Bachelor Pad. I am a, in the Bachelor Nation. If you do not watch the Bachelor, I don't want to call you a loser, but I'm going to call you a loser. That's um, fair. Because January sixth, um, Colton is is coming around. Colton's the new Bachelor, and I am eagerly and anxiously awaiting i cannot wait for the bachelor nation to kick up in less than a week that's probably one of my favorite facts about you when we were when i was a kid um i was really into barbies and we would do uh barbie bachelor my dad would be chris harrison and uh, i love chris harrison in oh, a good way though i think you should take chris harrison's place though whenever he retires from chris it. chris i know you're out there just like paul stanley from kiss i know you're listening because throngs of people are listening to this so, Chris, if you would contact me again, you have my email address. I am interested in taking your place when you uh, decide to become the final bachelor. I agree. Oh, that would be such a great way to end the show. It Although, I wonder if he if he has someone. Does he? I know he might. I know he was single. We'll have to, I'll have to read some of the tabloids yeah, and get find up out on about it. i get up on that. But, um, yeah, so I, I am part of the Bachelor Nation. I'll tell you a quick bachelor story. It's pretty funny. Many, many years ago, um, when I was the head coach uh, at Dunwoody High School, um, which I love, love me some Dumbity Wildcats. Um, I, uh, I had practice. It was a night practice. 
It was a Monday night, the night The Bachelor is on. I realized, and now this was, I don't think, this was pre-cell phones maybe even. I certainly didn't have when I was back in my, my pager days where I had a pager. Um, which, by the way, anytime I need to get it fixed, I had to drive down to South DeKalb to um, a beauty supply house and get it fixed down there because no one had pagers anymore, which is quite sad. But I think we should all go back to pagers. Forget about the iPhone 10. Everybody should go back to a pager. That'd be an easy transition, I think. Uh, without a doubt. It's <laughs> pre-internet. But so anyway, I realized that I was going to miss the show, and I literally told my team to take a break. Of course, I didn't tell them why. <laughs> I ran up into the coach's office, grabbed the phone to call home, and quickly said, please, The Bachelor's about to come on, please, which is probably on a VHS tape, please tape The Bachelor. And when I looked up... Um, I didn't realize that three of the football coaches were in the office when I said that, and they were just shaking their head at me <laughs> in dismay. But I don't think that makes me a bad person. No, Kevin. no, no. Uh, it, it makes you more cultured. You're, you're sensitive. You're, and, you know, you like reality TV. There's nothing wrong with that. Well-rounded, like around the horn. I've got, there's a lot of different parts to me. Um, in fact, I could cry right now if I wanted to. I could cry on command. But I'm oh, I'd love to. I'd love to get out a good cry. Should we? No, it's way. We'll, okay. we'll, 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 we'll wait. We'll wait off air. Off air, we'll cry. Get it. Get some napkins. Get some Kleenex. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, one last group I do want to mention to you. Getting back to the music, because you love this group. I don't know much about them, but they seem to be really good. Is in a, in a catchy name is Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Oh. So what's the story on them? Actually, Rainbow Kitten Surprise was my top listened to artist on Spotify this really? year. Really? Which was surprising because I didn't know I listened to them as much as I did. Um, I love Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Um, I We saw them, me, me and my close friend Shelby, who has been a friend. Oh, I er, like Shelby. Yeah, yeah. She, I live, I, um, she's my roommate. Uh, she's been a fan of the band for a long time. And we saw them play at the 40 Watt uh, my freshman year of college, which was three years ago. Yes. And, um... And they were like, this is the biggest show we've ever played. Like, thank you guys so much. And then, you know, the next year they were playing festivals and such. And um, they released an album as well this year that was really good. So um, they're a great band. Um, the, I, <laughs> I hate telling people their name, but um, it's, you know, they're, they're fantastic. If you haven't listened to them, definitely check them out. You get in on the ground floor because I will tell you right now, and uh, you were one of the early people who said, Dad, you need to listen to this group, but 21 Pilots before they blew up as well. 21 Pilots got so big. We saw... I saw 21 Pilots open for, and this concert would never happen again, but I saw them open for Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco in the, sa- in the same show. That hurts. Um, and then we saw them play small venues. I got the chance to meet Josh Dunn, who's the drummer, and, um, and then the next thing you know, they, they're selling out stadiums, which is insane. So. Well, of course, I will talk a lot during the podcast because I'm a big music person, and not uh, more recent stuff, but... I've seen some great shows in my life um, that you know I will share, but it was funny. We saw the um, saw Bohemian Rhapsody, which I still would still just give it another three. Yeah, I mean I... he was great in it, and I and he is Academy Award worthy. I thought he was tremendous in the film, but I thought the movie was a good film, not a great film. I'm like teetering between a four and a three on that one. Like I, I think I maybe agree with you, like the performance, and also for me the costuming was great. Um, all of that was a four, but yeah, the movie as a whole was a. Th- the three maybe but this they did a great job of telling the story and the story is a four or five you know like it's a great story but um i mean there's only so much you can do in a two-hour film you that's know? true but i mentioned that also for two reasons one because i was very fortunate to actually see queen uh with freddie mercury back in the day as that's they crazy. say which is pretty amazing but what's also amazing talking about groups and things that were awesome you know, the whole end of the film, and I don't give, oh, by the way, one of my, my, probably my greatest pet peeve for those of you that are out there is anyone that ever gives away an ending to anything. That would, that would ruin my entire, like I had, I was teaching English in my class and I had someone actually give away the ending to Mice and Men. (laughs) And I was literally about to, not that I would ever put my hands on a child, but I wanted to because I was highly upset for those of you, many who, the throngs who have read and have seen of Mice and Men. But I actually, the end of the film was, a lot of it was centered around Live Aid. Mm-hmm. And along with Andy and other friends of mine, we actually were in the, not, not in Wembley, but we were in Philly and I actually saw that Live Aid performance, which was uh, not the Wembley one, but it was pretty darn good. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine being there for that. That must have been incredible. It was. Um, but Caitlin, we've got, I've got a list of things still to talk about, but you know what? I think we're right at about 30 minutes. And right now these people are, are probably have had enough of us. I don't know why, 
Because I personally, I would like to hear you, the two of us talk all day. You just want to hear yourself talk all day. <laughs> Caitlin, don't say that about me, but you're, you're true. You're right about that. Listen, this is the first podcast of Around the Horn with CB and Caitlin. And you've been a great guest. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will it. be honest with you. I, um, I, you have warranted an invite back. Oh, like a part two? Part two and more. You've brought a lot of game to this one. And uh, there's some people that are probably going to be deadbeats that I'm not going to invite back. But you will be invited back. I'll take their place. So we're going to send this out to you now. Um, we hope, all I ask, even if you didn't like this, we're trying to get this thing off the ground, get it rolling. So please, sh- if you're on Facebook, share it. Twitter, share it. And um, if you have questions or, or responses, go to my email, send it back to me. Is that the best way for them to do it, Caitlin? Yeah, for now. For now. Um, but this has been Around the Horn with CB. And I've been Caitlin Bass on this. <laughs> and if we had outro music, we would play it right now. But instead, we have a, a mail truck that just drove by, <laughs> a kid shooting hoop. Who no, I don't want to be mean, but he's missed every shot. <laughs> and... Um, He's missing shots as we speak. Shot after shot after shot, which is phenomenal. Oh, he made one, which is tremendous. That's a good way to end. (laughs) He came to you from Western Florida, and next time you hear from us, it could still be from this area, or maybe we'll be back in the ATL, the wet ATL. I heard it's a little damp in ATL. We're enjoying the sun. And we're out of here. Thank you for listening. CB saying, I'm out.